so my name is Hillary Jericho. I am the medical director uh, of the celiac disease program within the Stanford Medicine Children's Health Center for IBD and Celiac Disease. I'm also a clinical associate professor of pediatric gastroenterology. I am uh, new to the Bay Area. I am coming out to California from Chicago. We moved out here in December. And um, I spent the last 10 years at the University of Chicago Celiac Program, which is a, also a world-renowned celiac program, which is where we are heading. Um, my clinical and research expertise focuses predominantly on the psychosocial aspects of celiac disease. Um, within pediatrics. So again, I'd like to say thank you for joining us today. Just to give you a quick rundown on what to expect um, in a second, I am going to uh, invite up the director of our center, Michael Rosen. Um, after that, it will be followed by a number of short talks on different aspects of celiac disease. We will then have a Q&A. So um, if you have any uh, questions, you can either bring them up, write them on a little slip of paper. Uh, there's a number of note pages in the back of the brochures or the programs. Um, so you can write your questions there. Um, either bring them up to the front or put them at the end of the table and we'll collect them or we'll be going around with a microphone and you can ask them out loud. And then um, to wrap up the session this morning, we will give out the raffle prizes at the very, very end. Uh, so, uh, next I would like to introduce Michael Rosen. He is our endowed professor for pediatric IBD and celiac disease and the director of our center here at the Stanford Medicine Children's Health Center for IBD and celiac disease. He is a pediatric gastroenterologist and physician scientist who's been devoted to inflammatory bowel disease research since the beginning of his medical training over 20 years ago. He's the director of Stanford uh, Medicine Children's Health Center for IBD and Celiac Disease and has expertise crossing mucosal immunology and epithelial biology, formal training and expertise in clinical and translational investigation within human biospecimens, and direct insight regarding the important clinical challenges caring for children with complicated IBD. Thank you for joining us today, Dr. Rosen. Thank you, Dr. Jericho. Wow, it's really exciting uh, to be with you all here today. Um, uh, as uh, Dr. Jericho said, I'm a pediatric uh, gastroenterologist, and it's really my privilege uh, to serve as director of this center. The mission of the center is to integrate leading edge uh, clinical care and research to elevate the lives of all children with inflammatory bowel disease and celiac disease. And uh, I'm so excited about the program today where we can come together as a community of people affected by celiac disease to learn about how Stanford is advancing both care and research and to learn from each other about overcoming the challenges of celiac disease. I want to just take a moment to thank uh, the vendors for joining us as a part of our community today. Uh, I also want to acknowledge our center staff who has really worked tireless, tirelessly to make this event a possibility. I want to thank uh, the leadership and the staff at Stanford Medicine Children's Health and Lucille Packard Children's Hospital who shared our vision for this day uh, and uh, helped make this wonderful morning happen. Uh, and lastly, I want to uh, share with you my excitement and enthusiasm for um, uh, Dr. Jericho coming uh, to Stanford uh, from Chicago. Um, I'm thrilled today for you to see what we see, which is her deep expertise and passion for caring for and advancing the care of children with celiac disease. So with that, I'd like to I'll pass, the, pass the microphone back to Dr. Jericho, and I uh, look forward to learning together this morning. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Rosen. All right, so I thought a fun way to start off the morning. Um, I have two young children, they're eight and 10 years old, um, and they have been uh, wonderfully supportive of me. And one of my uh, 
initiatives in being here is to create a series of fun videos on celiac disease and the many different aspects of celiac disease. So the first video my children helped me to create, I thought I would show this morning, it's about one minute long. Um, if you're familiar with many of those pharmaceutical promotion videos out there, this may look familiar to you. So with that, I will start the video. This is your wake up call. If you have undiagnosed celiac disease, month after month, the clock is ticking on worsening bowel inflammation. Abdominal pain, vomiting, headache, short stature, and weight loss are just a few of the signs of active celiac disease. The gluten-free diet, free of wheat, rye, and barley products can help stop the clock. Prescribed for 83 years, the gluten-free diet removes the source of inflammation that contributes to your celiac symptoms. Failure to adhere to the gluten-free diet can lead to long-term severe consequences, including diarrhea, abdominal pain, vomiting, fatigue, weight loss, short stature, delayed puberty, anemia, liver disease, osteoporosis, joint pains, headaches, seizures, depression, anxiety, infertility, and lymphoma. Tell your doctor if you have ongoing symptoms despite the gluten-free diet as additional testing may be needed. Don't start the gluten-free diet if you have not had proper testing for celiac disease, including blood testing and endoscopy. Help stop the clock on further irreversible intestinal damage. Talk to your gastroenterologist right here, right now. The gluten-free diet. Thank you the start of their acting careers. <laughs> All right, so I will pull up my slides. It was, there's, um, where did we go? We had headed south a tiny bit to one of the beautiful trails and, and hiking areas around here and, and uh, we were gonna go there anyway and then we filmed all of the different videos. So yeah, it's a beautiful place. All right, thank you, Jasmine. All right, and um, so keep your eyes peeled. Um, up here are a lot of our different social media sites, um, our website, my profile, and these are our Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok accounts. And so if you keep your eyes posted um, on Instagram and TikTok, you'll see many more videos to come, um, in addition to um, keeping your eye on our Twitter site, and there'll be many, many more postings, both on IBD and celiac disease moving forward. All right, so I'm just gonna open things up really quick and then turn it over to the rest of my team to talk about the specifics of celiac disease. Um, I will just be talking about what is celiac disease in general. All right, so as many of you probably already know, celiac disease is an autoimmune condition. It's triggered and sustained by the ingestion of gluten and it only occurs in genetically susceptible individuals. So those that are born with two very specific genes called DQ2 and DQ8. The disease will cause inflammation in the lining of the small intestine, which can result in a variety of clinical symptoms and is thought to affect roughly 1% of the general population, though this number is thought to be rising. So where is gluten? So gluten is the major storage protein in three grains. Those include wheat, rye, and barley. Where does it occur in the digestive tract? So celiac disease occurs in the very first part of the small intestine called the duodenum. Celiac disease is thought to cause kind of two main groups of symptoms, those that are considered classic and are typically within the gastrointestinal tract, as well as those that are considered the less typical, which occur outside the gastrointestinal tract. While not including all of them, some of the more common symptoms we think about within the gastrointestinal tract include diarrhea, abdominal pain, abdominal distension, anorexia, vomiting, constipation, failure to thrive, and irritability. Those atypical symptoms that occur outside the gastrointestinal tract can include things like short stature, delayed puberty, dental enamel defects, which is secondary to the malabsorption from celiac disease, predominantly calcium and vitamin D. So kids may wind up with some spotting or it can happen to anybody, but it has to occur while your teeth are forming and you may see yellow or gray spots on the teeth. Osteoporosis, iron deficiency anemia, arthritis, a very specific skin rash called dermatitis repetiformis, headaches, and depression and anxiety. 
There are three main blood tests that we can send. They're all antibodies to look for celiac disease, but the most common go-to screen is a test called a tissue transglutaminase IgA. The reason we use that as the screen is it has the best combination of being affordable or cheap and have the best accuracy. Once we get that blood testing and we have concerns someone may have celiac disease, the way we confirm that is through endoscopy. Um, and so what you're looking at here on this left screen is actually a normal, healthy bowel. I'm not sure if you can appreciate, but it kind of has this nice fluffy appearance, which is all those villi that are, exist in your intestinal tract, the finger-like projections that help with absorption. What we see with celiac disease is all those villi get flattened. And so you wind up with this kind of very um, flattened appearance. These are the folds, and I don't know if you can quite appreciate it, but we call it scalloping. It's like a scallop shell that develops, and then you get this cracked desert appearance in between from um, the blunting of those villi and the tissue kind of folding on itself as a result. So as you all uh, likely know already, and we'll hear more about in a few minutes, the only current treatment for celiac disease is the gluten-free diet. On that note, I would like to take that opportunity to thank all of our vendors today, our, our local restaurants, our ba uh, bakeries for their support of this event. We could not do this without them. In addition, I'd like to thank all of our larger manufacturers that sent in goods again to support this event, which we could not have done without them, in addition to our local Trader Joe's who donated all of the bananas and the oranges you found down on the last table. And last but not least, I would also like to thank all of our both local and national foundations who were here today to support us as well. And a special shout out to both Jasmine and Alexandra, our administrative assistants, who absolutely are the reason this event happened this morning. A last friendly reminder, please do not start the gluten-free diet until all of the testing is complete, as we want to make sure to get the most accurate diagnosis that we can. And if the gluten-free diet is started too early, it can make that difficult. A special thank you. And before I end, I just want to let you know of our next upcoming event, which is our summer scamper. We do specifically have an IBD and CELEC team. The QR code for that is here as well as on our website. And we would love to have our community join us for that event. So please sign up.